Welcome to another exciting Morales video. Today we're going to have a look at how block explorers use Morales in order to fetch all of the data that's required in order to build a block explorer. So things like transactions, internal transactions, token balances, native balance, NFT transfers, all of these different things. We're going to show you how the components in a typical block explorer map to the endpoint in Morales and what endpoints you should use for what things. So if you're building a block explorer or if you're just curious about the functionality that we have at Morales in order to provide you with all of the data about an address, then this video is for you. But of course, the use cases for this data is way broader. The same data can be used for wallets, portfolios, analytics applications, maybe even tax and accounting applications. So I hope that you're excited. And if you are, make sure to like the video or leave a comment down below. And we're going to just use a random address at Etherscan as an example, uh, because Etherscan number one is a uh, explorer that everyone has used. Everyone is familiar with the layout. Uh, everyone knows how to use it in the crypto space. So we're going to use that as an example and map out the Morales endpoints that would correspond to the different um, parts in a typical block explorer. And I've just found a random address here that we're going to use from the homepage. Um, and they have some tokens, they have some ETH, they have some NFTs. And we could start by getting the um, native balance here. And how we do that in Morales is that we would go to the native balance, uh, sorry, wallet API, get native balance, uh, get native balance by wallet. It would input the wallet address into here and click try it. And this is of course just for visualization and testing purposes here in the docs, which is docs.morales.io. Um, you would of course need to integrate it in, into your application with our SDKs or REST API. So here we get the balance back in way, and you would need to move the decimal points. Um, I believe it's 18 decimals to get to Ethereum, so 14.68 something something. Um, and now it's 67. So this person, I believe, yeah, there you go. This balance is changing quite uh, quite often. Uh, they're part of, uh, I believe, some kind of MEV bot. It looks like so they're getting a lot of transfers all the time. So balance is going to vary as we update. Um, but uh, there we go, that's for the native balance. And uh, you can get, also get that over time. If you wanna use the two block number, you can check for blocks in, in, in um, back in time. Mm, and uh, then looking at token holdings, you can um, do that using the token balance endpoint. So get tokens, get ERC20 token balance by wallet, paste in the wallet address here, same thing, choose the chain. Uh, you can also filter if you want to check for specific tokens, but in this case, we want all of them. Click try it. And here we get all of the tokens back. And usually for tokens like this, there will be a lot of uh, spam tokens. too. So you'll see like this symbol is $880 visit da, 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 to claim reward. And that's some sort of phishing scam with Morales. You can see that it's classified as possible spam. Same thing here, same thing here. I'm not sure how Etherscan handles uh, these types of, of tokens, yeah, you can see them show all of these spam tokens here as well. Um, so they would maybe be better off if they also implemented Morales so they wouldn't have these weird tokens. Um, but you can um, use that and here you also get from all of the bigger uh, coins, you will get the logo back. So here you could see, for example, a real coin. Oh no, that's also <laughs> listed as spam. Where do we have a real coin? Here you go, wrap BTC. Uh, you would see that we have the thumbnail and the logo for that uh, as well as the balance. And then if you want to convert that into an actual US dollar value, you would also need to call the price endpoint, which let's see, where is that? That's in the token API, get price. You would call that for the token to get the price of it. And uh, moving on, we can go to the transaction list and in order to fetch that, you would go to the wallet API once again, get transfers or not get transactions and get native transactions by wallet. Um, we could actually use decoded transactions. This is a little bit more expensive to call in terms of compute units, but you will get, if there are any labels, let's see, can I see any labels here? Apart from normal transfers, if there are any other events, okay, so there aren't for this address. Let's see, can I find one? Doop, 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 doop. 
if there are making approval transactions, for example, or some sort of mint transaction or a multi-call, which would show up in Etherscan. Uh, but just because I selected an address without it, I won't be able to find, I just find normal transfers. Okay, never mind. <laughs> but the decoded endpoint would be uh, able to give you those if the address in question had any. So this is the more um, data rich endpoint to use. So let's just see what we get back here. We take the address, paste it in here and click try it. Once again, there's a lot of filtering opportunities here. Um, if you want internal transactions or not, if you uh, want to limit the response size. Mm -mm -mm. Now this takes quite a long time because this is a big wallet. Uh, you could limit the page size if you want a quicker response. But here we go. And you can see here that this will tell you uh, the from address label, which is beaver build, which is a well-known address, it looks like. And you can also see um, the to address and that is also has a label fee recipient something something and let's see did they have something else you can also hear to address label here is Lido execution layer rewards vault so there's we include these labels for well-known addresses so that you also can render an interface like this you see Lido beaver build so it's not just a raw address which is very useful for your users to know to see what's going on in the wallet and also, as I said, if there are any events, you would see here in decoded call, um, you would see what's going on there. There is a log here, though, that can be decoded. Uh, ETH received is some event. So if you click on a, uh, let's see, what is the first transaction? I assume it's maybe this one. We'll see. Things change here so quickly. I'll update. Mm. And you can see here that ETH received. There's an actual event here. So if you want to render this as well, you get it straight out of the box here with decoded decoded event inside of the logs array for the specific transaction. Mm. So that will help you be able to render this entire transaction with all of the details that you see here, uh, because you also have the value of the transaction in here, mm. and as well as the block number, the timestamp, all of that stuff. If you also want to render internal transactions, you can include that here include internal transaction and this will also include internal transactions that you can loop through and render this internal transaction view and then we can also have a look at token transfers so here we see all of the ERC20 transfers and also all of the different labels uh, we can go into get transfers get ERC20 token transfers by wallet once again we'll take the address paste that in here you get the point uh, we'll run that and we'll get all of the token transfers And here you go, you can see uh, token name, CRO, token logo, token decimals, all of the metadata for the token. You can also see that it was transferred from a Coinbase wallet, Coinbase wallet number 10, to Beaver Build. And you can see the value uh, with the decimals now in place. You don't even have to do that conversion on your own. Mm, and uh, yeah, I think that's all you need to know. That's all the information that you have on this page right here with the transaction hash the timestamp, the from label, to label, the value, and the token. You have the metadata in there as well. Uh, so that's all you need to render that. NFT transfers, same thing here. If we go into NFT transfers, paste in the address. Do, 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 do. Here we go. You get all of the NFT transfers, including the labels once again. Um, What's currently not in here is all of the NFT metadata. That will be added shortly uh, on our side. Here you also have the spam classification. Um, this is also being improved. It's very difficult to dis detect all NFT spam, but you will see if it's a verified collection or not, which is the most reliable indicator. If it's like a valuable NFT, then it would be verified on a uh, marketplace like OpenSea. But here you can see this was classified as spam, for example. So you wouldn't need to render that if you don't want to. Uh, you can see there's a lot of these bullshit NFTs here. But apart from that, I will give you the NFT view. Mm, and yeah, for now, the NFT metadata is not included in the transfer response, but you can always query the NFT metadata uh, using the NFT API, get the NFT metadata, and you can use that to get the metadata that you want, including uh, all the images, all of the attributes and so on of the NFT. 
Mm, and that's it for this view. Of course, you can render a lot more info if you want to go like into the actual NFT. Uh, this is a beautiful NFT. You can use the NFT API to render all of this stuff um, here. Mm, and um, including things like um, floor prices and so on. And same thing goes for tokens. If you want to go into a specific token, we have all the data for that, including prices, historical prices. Uh, so Kronos coin here, you can use our token API to render all of the things here, including all of the different transfers. Uh, if we remove that, you could use Morales to render uh, all of the things here, including the transfers, the holders. Um, or let's see, I'm not sure you can do holders at the moment. That is also coming uh, soon with all of the different holders percentage and so on. Uh, so yeah, a very powerful API if you're looking to build a block explorer. And I hope that this helped you to see how you map the different components from a typical block explorer into how you would use Morales to build something like that. Um, if you have any questions, make sure to leave them down below in the comment section. And if you enjoyed the video, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel. And I'm looking forward to seeing you in the next video.